Hi, I'm Caroline Weaver from Body and Soul Companion. We are on week 17, the two standards, day five. So our text today is Matthew 6, 19 through 21. And I'll be reading it in three different versions. I even have the versions already out. New American Standard, The Message, and the passion. So I'll be doing, we'll be doing a Lexio Divina that I'll be guiding you through. But again, just to remind you, um, we're looking at the standard of Jesus versus the standard of the enemy. And the standard is that flag. Which flag are you going to go to uh, in, in, in the whole scheme of things? Hopefully you're going toward the Jesus's standard. So let's close our eyes and breathe slowly. Relaxing our body. Relaxing our minds. And receiving God's loving gaze at you. He's so glad you're here. And I'm glad you're here too. We pray that more of our day would be directed to your service and praise and we seek the grace to discern the deceits of the rebel chief, the enemy, and help guard against those deceits. And we pray for a deeper, deep, deep, intimate knowledge of your ways, Jesus. You are, Jesus, the sovereign, true commander. And your load is easy. Your burden is light. So I pray that we would see your ways more clearly as we meditate on your word today. Your word specifically, Jesus. And the grace to imitate your ways in our life. So this is the red letter part of my new American standard because these are Jesus's words to us. Matthew 6 19 through 21. Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust destroys and where thieves do not break in or steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart is will be also. Let's just sit with that reading. And the second reading, reflect on a word or phrase that shimmers for you. Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust destroys 
and where thieves do not break in or steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. So what word or phrase stood out to you? Reflect upon it. For this third reading, I'll read from the Amplified, not the Amplified, the Message Version, and then talk to God about what he's stirring in your heart from that reflection. Don't hoard treasure down here where it gets eaten by moths and corroded by rust or worse stolen by burglars, stockpile treasures in heaven, where it's safe from moth and rust and burglars. It's obvious, isn't it? The place where your treasure is, is the place you will most want to be and end up being. Let's re respond to God. For this last reading, we'll spend four minutes in silence and I'll read from the Passion. Don't keep hoarding for yourselves earthly treasures that can be stolen by thieves. Material wealth eventually rusts, decays, and loses its value. Instead, stockpile heavenly treasures for yourselves that cannot be stolen and will never rust, decay, or lose their value. For your heart will always per pursue what you esteem as your treasure. Let's sit with that for four minutes of silence, focusing your gaze on loving God. A loving God.
Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Since we had a shorter time, I wanted to review the day, the flow of prayer. I did that a lot in the first 10 weeks, just trying to ingrain it in you. This is our second part, week two, so I haven't been doing it as much, but we have a little bit of time. So just a little short review. Our flow of prayer is where we settle in, receive the loving presence of God, and that includes bringing your whole body to God. We did that. Um, your mind, heart, soul, mind, and strength to God, and then receiving. He's loving that you're here. That's, that's, I can't emphasize that enough. Um, Thomas Merton said, I believe that the desire to please you does, in fact, please you. And I think it pleases God no end that you're here. It pleases me that you're here. So that. And then we do our prep preparatory prayer, which is our day being committed to your service and praise. Just every day commit to his service and praise. And then we seek the grace for the particular grace for that day. And this one is a long one. I have to always read it because <laughs> it's so long. So, um, but it's a good one. It's about the two standards. We seek the grace to discern the deceits of the enemy, who is the rebel chief, and help guard against them, those deceits, and to have a deeper knowledge of the ways of Jesus, the sovereign, the true commander, and the grace to imitate Jesus's ways. And then we go into our either Lexio Divina. It's this whole week, I think, is all Lexio Divina that I remember pretty much. And there are shorter passages. Yeah, so we've gone through some, or Matthew 11, 28 through 30, Jeremiah 6, 16, Psalm 1, Deuteronomy 30, 15 through 20, Matthew 6, 19 through 21 was today and tomorrow. I, is Jesus speaking again, but again, it's a shorter passage, so we're just going to do Lexio Divina in that. But but anytime Jesus is speaking, imagine yourself, that's part of the contemplation, imagine yourself in modern day, or not modern day, um, in Palestine, listening to Jesus um, speak these words directly to you. And then on day seven, we'll do a repetition of the meditation on the two standards sum up the whole week it's book book mark or book what are those kind of bookend where it's bookended by the two standards and then after that we um we have a silent time for the most part we have silent time there's a, been a few times we haven't done that but i just contemplating just focusing your gaze on god i just think it's really important and then taking your candle, going to another part of your house, walking around or going outside and walking. And then um, doing that report of prayer. And we have enough time to go over the questions that you would ask. It's a review of prayer, but just journaling. I like to journal as I'm meditating too. So, so a lot of times, but this is kind of what, for you to journal the gist at least about what the prayer time we're just forgetful creatures so what out of the prayer time um was and by the way walking around is that colloquy friend to friend you're taking a walk with a friend or you're going to the fireplace with your friend and just having a who good time <laughs> you can look at that word hi h-y-g-g-e okay so the review of prayer is what were the significant interior movements, feelings, reactions, intuitions, desires, emotions, thoughts, or insights? What was the prevailing mood of my prayer? Peace, agitation, excitement, boredom, confusion, calm? Was my prayer more about the head or the heart or about both? It's about, it's not 
head and just insight about Jesus and what he said. It's encounter with Jesus. It's encounter with God. Um, that has said that um, attachment, that love relationship with God. That's what it's about. Not that you don't have insight. So it could be a combination of both. What word, phrase, image, or memory meant most to me during prayer? Is there some unfinished business that I think God is calling me to return to in another time of prayer? I often forget. And sometimes, oh, I should say, um, sometimes I go and take a shower. That's part of my, and then I have the, my colic way or um, my conversation time with Jesus in the shower. And then I have shower pens or tub crayons, they're called. They're for kids, but I'll write, you know, I'll write down what God's, what I feel like I'm hearing from God and I'll write it down. So every time I take a shower, I'm reminded because I could, God, I could have an encounter with God in the shower and by the time I start to dry myself off, I'll forget. So I usually, I write everything down. So there, um, is there something happening in my life that is becoming part of my prayer? Do I feel moved to do something concrete in my life? Am I making the necessary preparations for prayer? Is there anything I'm doing or not doing that is getting in the way of my listening to God? So that's the flow of prayer. And then separate or in conjunction with your time having, like I do my examine prayer time in the morning. I just do because I fall asleep at night. I've said this several times. <clears throat> so tea, need tea. So, um, but you may be able to review your day. So tonight, if you're doing, if you're praying in the morning tonight, you do, you have an examine. You can look at, I have a podcast. I don't have a podcast, but I have um, a link to the podcast in um, part one is the examine. Or maybe I should put this in both playlists. I think I will because I have two separate playlists. But I'll put the examine prayer that'll guide you can guide you through every day and examine. I guide you through. It's like less than 15 minutes, I think. And that's it. That, but um, but also going through your day. So you're going through your day, going where am I seeing examples like two standards? Where am I seeing the you know the the pull between those two standards? You know, um, the, the call of God, you know, and Psalm 1, the path of the righteous birth, path of the wicked. Where am I seeing that in my day-to-day -day life? And where am I making choices? And even your exam is going to help you because you're looking at things that you turn to the light of God's presence. It's those choices again, those choices. And um, it's choose life treasure in heaven versus treasures on earth you know those are those those are choices too so that is i don't know how long i talked on that um but since we had a little bit of extra time today i wanted to review just the daily flow of prayer be blessed see you tomorrow